Yeah, just to uh, whoa show you that you have to. Yeah, it's it's an awkward camera cut right here. It's a long jump, and to try to tell the player, oh yeah, well, I mean, we tried so much to just lead the player. You're supposed to jump off of here, but you know, nobody would ever jump down until we showed them. Oh hey, there's something down there. Well, because why would you jump down? Well, yeah. Well, probably because there's nowhere else to go. So we figured, where else would they, what they do? But players are constantly confounding your expectations. I was surprised we didn't have to put a, uh, a taxi there or something. <laughs> I'm surprised that we were able to get it done as smoothly as that. Oh, look. See, this is clever. They don't let you go back to the start of the level. Because if we let you go back this way to the start of the level... You'll never catch this 90 degree turn <laughs> that takes you into the next segment. And it's a mandatory segment, you know, we we can't have the player not going there, so. Yeah, our first big Terminator puzzle. And uh, one of the up. one of the few times we have a checkpoint where we don't shortcut you back to the beginning of the level. Yeah. No, I think there's a taxi at the end. Uh at the end of this, yes. There's up there. Yeah. But not at the end of uh, oh, right, that up right, there. Right. Uh, like because you finished an enemy segment, and now we're going into a Terminator segment, and right. we didn't shortcut you to the because you know this this Terminator segment sort of attaches on to the end of the last one. I'm pretty sure Tim did this Terminator segment. Uh, I did the main, the enemy setups of this level, but I'm pretty sure Tim had to do with this part of the level. So uh, so you're having not done have, most of the Terminator stuff. So you're not going to have much of the. Uh, uh, not much to say. No, I'll, I'll I'll say plenty. I just think that I'm just giving credit where credit is due. Got it. I just thought you were trying to excuse yourself for not being able to be interesting. This must have been another one that was difficult to focus, or at least difficult to watch be focused. Oh, dude! Because it's such a, a precise a challenge. It's unlike what we do anywhere else. Oh, and it was so much more precise before we started testing it. I yes. mean, it, it, there's a little bit of snapping that goes into it uh, in the finished version that just wasn't there at all. Right, uh, we, we, require, we required an uh, unbelievable level of precision uh, to get these to work originally. And uh, players just had such a difficult time, uh, you know, doing what was required of them. Even under the best circumstances, they had a difficult time. Yeah. And, you know... It was way more so in, in stuff like this. Uh, but yeah, the Terminator and uh, also the uh, uh, the Hydro Displacer in the first game were both similarly difficult, and they both dealt with uh, rising water planes. So I'm, I'm guessing uh, maybe there's just some sort of subconscious block that people have. Oh, look at that Peter Hastings bridge. No, I'm pretty sure that was a Tim bridge. Was it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Tim... I'm pretty sure Tim did all this stuff. In okay. Here. Sorry, Tim. <laughs> or unless that was well, Peter, and then sorry, Peter. There's, I think there's there's few things in the world that could get Tim as angry as crediting someone else for his stuff, so I am really sorry, Tim, <laughs> if, 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 if I ever credit something that, that uh, you did to someone else. All right. I, you know what? This really slows the pace down a lot, doesn't it? It really does. I mean, there's no combat in here whatsoever. And this is one of those few traversal sections that we have where there is zero combat. Whoa. Like, we at least usually have a small amount. But here, it's really nothing. Except for an occasional chicken bot. Except for the occasional chicken bot. Because the chicken bots were <laughs> everywhere in this fucking game. Uh, and I will bleep that out later. Don't worry, Tony. You're, you're, <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be family friendly. Uh, I guess let's go do that bolt crank. I do not remember anything about how to solve this section. Yeah, um... I mean, I can do it, but I... Yeah. I just don't remember it. And I must have done this hundreds of times. But, you know, none of it's sticking with me. So far, though, it's... it. This is kind of a hallmark of Ratchet gadget design. Uh, is uh, they favor gadgets that make you feel smart over gadgets that require you to be smart. 
and it's a, it's an important distinction. And the, well, the thing is, it's not just Ratchet, right? Uh, Zelda does this too. I, I realized later, but uh, it is more important that the player feel smart than that he be required to be smart. And what what our uh, uh, we designers used to like to say that Ratchet puzzles were a, uh, rooms full of levers that only moved in one direction. Uh, and I think that was a I think that was a Sean Whistler quote. But basically. Um, that whole thing I did, I felt like I was figuring it out, but at any given time, there was really a small set of actions I could actually take, right. and and uh, it, it made me feel really smart. Like the clank, the clank sections do that too, but don't actually require that much, you know. Besides going from one one part to the next, uh, and it's 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 actually a very important lesson to learn as a designer, is that there? Oh, the Sharkigator. Oh, the Sharkigator. Quick note about the Sharkigator. Uh, in every single Ratchet game, we tried to take out the Sharkigator and fail. <laughs> we're like, no, this time? We'll this just... time, we're, we're not going to resort to the Sharkigator this time. But no, never did we ever succeed in not resorting to the Sharkigator. Dude, is the Sharkigator in the uh, Monsterpedia? If not, I'll be very sad. Oh, no shark. No shark. So, you know, people never knew he was called the Sharkigator. Yeah. He was but a yeah. holdover from Ratchet 1 and he stayed in there forever. And nobody liked it. Nobody on the development team liked it <laughs> because they felt quite fairly that he was a cop out of, well, we have to kill Ratchet when he goes into water. Uh, how are we going to do that? And we couldn't ever think of anything more clever that worked as well as the shark again. Sorry, I had to concentrate for that part. It's okay. Because uh, I remember, I remember this being a particular. This is the least levers that only move in one direction part <laughs> of this entire puzzle, and of course, this is the hugest stumbling block for. For the kids, and it was because of the, because it was so analog, what level the water was at. Right. And you have to go back and, and reheat the water, well, and, and then I mean, refreeze the water. I mean, that's sort of what it comes down to: is that it's not, it's not hard to figure out this puzzle, but it's frustrating to fail. Exactly. And, uh, oh man, did I just fail? No, I think you're good. Oh yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, they, there was some snapping that goes on. That we had to do just because it felt so unfair, but uh, at the end, it's still a pretty hardcore puzzle. Um, did I? No, I, I couldn't have gone through that already. But yeah, the sag of the shark gator is a long and difficult and uh, long and sad story. <laughs> Poor shark gator. I think you're gonna get eaten. Is there a shark gator in here? Oh no, I guess no, I guess you're fine. Oh, there's a shark. Oh, there he is. Oh, there you go. Fuck. Down do I, you go. Do I have to start the whole sh No, I think there's a checkpoint here. Okay. Uh pretty you're still pretty far back, but Oh. Oh. Just fucking shoot me. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this was, it's a difficult one to get through because you get it, when you get it wrong, you have to invest a lot of time to reset the puzzle yep. uh, and get your chance to do it right. Oh, I might have done it wrong. No, I think you're good. I think as long as it's solid, in, like in the... Yeah, I think as long as you can pass through there, you should be fine. Because I think it was possible to be able to pass through there, but still have it be too low. Uh, which is, early, I mean, at some point, for which, sure. Which is bullshit, by the way. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing is that one of the reasons this is so difficult is that there is no environmental markers to say this is the correct height. Do it. Here. Oh, fuck beans. <laughs> oh man, did I fail? No, I think you're fine. I just keep thinking I failed. Oh, 
Okay. Alrighty, I'm not gonna fall in there. Yeah, there's a shark again. I'm surprised I didn't die the first time. I mean, that's the other problem with this um, this gadget is that you push the button and that's not the timing you have to worry about. Yeah. It's when the ice hits the water that you have to worry about. I was and just... the water is a moving target, it's uh, it's very difficult. I was just thinking that it is. It's sort of a dual unfair me, thing to right. ask. Because every other gun is you fire and forget. Weirdos? Right. Oh, are we going to another clank section here? I don't think so. Oh no, this is just you buy something from these guys. A masked customer picked up an order not long ago. Recently Another, a new here, give us your money, and they are willing to uh, show it to us don't buy weapons, small section of Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, an oddly, uh, oh wow, sort of an oddly at, at odds with our goals. Oh, I love this cutscene. I think if I had to name one of my favorite cutscenes, this would be it. Two more containers of sulfuric acid. <laughs> Oops. Uh, better make that five containers and uh, four containers of liquid hydrogen. Oops. Uh, better add six crates of nitroglycerin. Uh, look, just give me double that. And I need it delivered. This is the part where we had to start making the thief likable so that when she, right. when she turns, it's not as, hey, as crazy. What? <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> oh, uh, piece of trivia for Insomniac fans. The voice of Clank is the voice of Nathan Hale from Resistance. Oh, is it really? Yeah, David Kay. I think Talented that's his name. Talented man. Very. Uh, he does voices in a lot of games, and I'm never able to pick him out. I think this is the first appearance of the taxi. In uh, the... We've been talking about him for weeks and weeks now, but finally but the, the taxi. the first appearance of the taxi. Uh, Which is a holdover from Ratchet 1. Yeah. You know what the biggest horrible headache about the taxi was? Trying to make sure the player could not walk off of it as it was in <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, was that a huge problem. Every time we think we got it, some new player would find a new way to walk off of the taxi. You know what? I'm going to buy the I'm um, sniper rifle. Go for the pulse rifle. Yeah, the the economy scales up. And I think we're going to uh very soon we're going to get to the part where we do the desert crystals. Which is worth yeah. a lot of money. I don't know if we're, we're going to record all the desert crystals if we do do it. <laughs> Depends on if we have enough interesting things to say. Because, well, I don't know if there's enough things that can be said during the desert crystals. Not to knock the desert crystals, but it's a lot of time but, us to find those crystals. But we will get to that in a future episode of, uh, what are we calling this show? I don't know. Developer Commentary, Ratchet no. and Clank, Going Commando. Right. Uh, Signing out, I am Mike Stout. I'm Tony Garcia. And we'll catch you next time. Goodbye.